Let's move on to the Rams and the Bucks. The Rams win 30 to 27. And first off, uh, Rams fumbles. Good gracious. Uh, four of them in the game. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, it was just and then, ridiculous. Well, and two weeks ago, when they lost to the 49ers, who they get to play for a third time that they haven't beaten all year, yep. the, it was interception, interception, interception. Oh, yeah. This team cannot hurt. Help, help, they can't help but hurt themselves. Oh, yeah. It's insane. It is really insane. Uh, Matt Stafford in this game led his 43rd career game winning drive. It's the most among any player since entering the NFL in 2009. Uh, this includes playoffs, of course. Um, the Rams won a playoff game with four giveaways for the first time since at least 1940. Teams that did that in the past were 0 and 8 in such games. And uh, the last team to win back to back Super Bowls was New England in 2003 2004. Uh, this is now the longest drought without back-to-back winners in NFL history. So, kind of kind of strange, kind of interesting. Uh, Tom Brady faced uh, 17 pressures in this game. It's the most that he has faced in the game all season. I think well, a lot we of that... knew that was going to be a problem yeah, after week Tristan one worst. of the playoff. Well, it's not just worst. Well, I agree. They, 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 they only have two of their starting five offensive linemen starting. Yes, yes. but uh, what I'm two. saying is that we, we had a feeling it was going to be uh, even worse because when both tackles, worst was it's not, not just there. worst, both worst, tackles. Yeah. And then the backup tackle that was taking worst spot today also was playing hurt. You can see that yeah. he was barely able to step on his foot, and he's having to guard, you know, Von Miller, and then sometimes, uh, you know, uh, Aaron Donald. And it's just, it's an impossible task. It's it like, we watched Patrick Mahomes try to play in a Super Bowl without an offensive line, and it wasn't close. It wasn't close. He got the hell beat out of him. Tom at least found a way to to get some kind of offense going to where they could keep it close. Now he capitalized on a lot of the turnovers and and things like that, but it, it was just one of those things where you see how impossible of a task it is to try and stop legit defenses. Which right now, you know, that front for for the Rams is probably the best left in the game. And and I know there's a team out there with Joey Bosa on it, and it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, you know the the collection of talent, but the Rams have put together a team exactly like the Dodgers. Can they put it together? Can they win it? Maybe I don't know. We'll see if a bunch of superstars can can win a title. For, and they get to do LA. it at home, like the next yeah. two games. If if they get by the 49ers, they got them at home. Uh, then they will have the Super Bowl at home. And I mean, obviously Tampa Bay getting to do it last year. Uh, how how ironic is it? That so we've never had it. Now we might have two, <laughs> now we two might years have in a row. Back to back. I mean, just yeah. ridiculous. Uh, the way that this thing went down, uh, you know, you get into the third quarter and it's 27 to three, and it looks like Tampa Bay has nothing in the tank, like nothing whatsoever. And all of a sudden, I mean, you turn this thing back around and Tom starts figuring stuff out. Yes. Yes. He's 100%. a problem solver. Uh, he yeah. most certainly is. Uh, it's something interesting about this game. Um, so there's a, an interesting over at rbsdm.com slash stats. It's basically the NFL R like analytics site, right? Um, the guy that does it, Ben Baldwin is the guy uh, and you can find him on Twitter. He's a really interesting follow. Uh, he does a, a very interesting series success. Basically anytime you get a new set of downs, that counts as a new series, right? In this game, the Rams had 35 series and the Bucks had 31. Rams were 68.6 success rate and the Bucks were 64.5. So both really, really successful when they had the ball overall. Um, but the interesting part about this was the team that had uh, the that started with a pass more often on their series. They won every single playoff game. So the the Rams started with the pass 87.5%. The Bucks started 73.9%. I, I found that very interesting that it, it happened to fall for every single one of these playoff games. Um, I take that back. They just updated the Bills numbers, and the Bills actually were 86.4 to 84%. But the fact that both of them were, were damn near 85% uh, is pretty pretty far out there and we'll talk more about San Francisco and Green Bay it's you know etc etc the Bengals and whatnot um but passing like trying to be somewhat unpredictable on early downs is a big big thing here I I don't know that I blame the Bucks for running as much as they did 
because they had to. They were they didn't have as many weapons. I this was we haven't seen Brady play uh or, or not be the better quarterback in a quarterback duel in quite some time. And Matt Stafford played, I mean, almost perfect ball. I mean, he was really, really good today. Uh, what did you think about Stafford and uh, and Brady's play in this one? Well, I mean, I thought Stafford played great. He had all, you know, he had all the protection in the world. They didn't get, like, really a lot of pressure on him whatsoever. Um, you know, they he, he just was accurate. He was Matt Stafford. He... He's going up against a very inexperienced secondary, so that helps. Um, got a good front seven, but a week back, you know, three or four, and uh, and he was able to pick them apart. Matt Stafford they, had a hell of a game. They Tom, were healthier, like, like it, way healthier well, yeah. than the Bucks. Like well, it's, no, they're yeah, they're, they're missing Robert Woods, but they replaced Robert Woods with Odell. Yeah, like they they they're this is the team that they are hoping to have and 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 they've you know <laughs> it seems to be everything lining up for them to to get them what they need yes. okay they they're loaded they're playing well even when they make mistakes which four fumbles today none of them really Stafford's fault uh which is what you want to see um and uh and, and yeah i mean he he had a hell of a game so. No, he, he most certainly did. Cam Akers, of course, uh, you know, the majority of the fumbles there. Um, if they score from the one, I don't think this game ever gets to where it got to. Um, but, you know, who's to say? Who's to say? Uh, Odell Beckham was the best wide receiver as far as EPA per play. But, obviously, anybody that watched the game, Cooper Cup may have been the MVP of the entire game. I mean, he might have been the MVP of the weekend. Cooper Cup was just unbelievable. Um, but, it, again, Matt Stafford puts him in great positions, so it is what it is. Leonard Fournette was actually pretty good in this one. Uh, Cam Akers, the situation there, like him coming back from injury, he still just looks rusty, man. He just, you know, and we'll see what he looks like next week going up against that 49ers defense because that that could be a very interesting game. I uh, I mean, again, a wonderful game. It was 27-3, to and then the Bucks do the comeback, and this looked like an epic collapse. I mean, just epic choke job by the Rams, and no and cheers to them for for getting that thing done with what thirty something seconds left. I mean, just a deep pass. How how guys like Travis Kelsey and Cooper Cup get open when when you would feel like the majority of people know the ball is coming their way? It just blows my mind. Now I understand the defenses that they call and whatnot. What Tampa Bay did still makes no sense to me, even. Hours and hours and hours later, the bringing the blitz the way that they did on that play, just. I, but Gary, I think they had to because they don't have the secondary. They I, don't. I, I'm you with know, you. You know you're going to collect connect a pass if if we don't rush anybody and we just drop everybody back. You know they're going to get something. You have to make them have incompletions, and the only way to do that is to get him on his ass or to make him throw the ball away. Okay. That's the only way because the secondary is too beat up. The secondary is too inexperienced and not good enough in ta- in Tampa Bay. Yeah, and it's and if you look at so it, you I understand have to that play they're down. your strengths. Like you can say, well, that doesn't work. Well, then that means they're just going to lose. Yeah, but we have to try something. And I would rather go out with my best bullets. Okay, I'd rather go out <laughs> all out rush in leaving these young inexperienced DBs on islands by themselves and hope that we can get to somebody then dropping five of those guys or six of those guys and putting no pass rush on whatsoever and hoping that six un- inexperienced young guys that aren't very good at their job don't don't you know get caught holding don't you know commit a PI and actually cover somebody long enough to, to, to stop these freakish athletes. Yeah, when when you look at who they've actually got available at wide receiver, um, I mean, it's DB, not... you mean? Uh, no, 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 I'm talking about uh, for the Rams because it wasn't just oh. Cooper Cup, right? Because they, they basically were running man on these guys. And, and there's Cup, there's Beckham, and there's Jefferson. You put anybody in that slot right there, and they're going to be able to get open. So it really didn't matter who it was. For something. Yeah. So so this is, this is why your only option really is... To 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 take down the quarterback to stop the ball from getting to the air. Yes, 
Yes. I, I mean, it I, makes so sense. I'm okay, with, I'm okay with it. I don't like the outcome, but I also don't like the situation. Like, there's nothing you could do at this point down in the season. There's nobody to go get that can play DB for you. Yeah, no, you're you're not wrong about that. Uh, average depth of target for these two, by the way, uh, seven point nine for both Brady both, and Stafford. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, I bet, I bet this was gonna be pretty equal. They oh, yeah. they, they played a very similar game. Uh, total EPA per play for Stafford was point two six for Tom Brady. It was negative point two two. Very rarely does he have a negative EPA in a game, but uh, but the interceptions hurt, and you know, just overall, not a. Not a great game by Brady, but uh, but he played well enough to get him back in it. He played well enough to get him back in it for sure. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.